Jai Hind, welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achint. I have someone special for me from a little far away to discuss the situation in the Middle East and West Asia. I have with me Dr. Michael Barak, who's coming to us straight from the IDC Hazilia in Israel. Thank you, sir, for joining me. There's a lot happening in that region that I wanted to get your views on and to understand how Israel looks at the various developments in the region. Thanks for the invitation. First of all, it's uh, good to be here. Um, so, so uh, we recently heard about the Biden visit in uh, the Middle East, uh, first in Israel and then uh, to Saudi Arabia. I think this is uh, a symbol and the manifestation of uh, the, the strong bond between Israel to United States. Also Biden said, and also uh, uh, Yair Lapid, the Prime Minister of Israel, that the United States and Israel are sharing a joint, joint interest. They are uh, fighting against, uh, they are fighting to defend on the democracies. They are de determined to fight against, uh, the, against uh, Iran um, efforts to achieve a nuclear bomb. And the uh, United States also um, uh, said it very clearly that uh, it's interested now to promote a second Abraham Accords, like we had the first one with uh, UAE, Bahrain, Morocco, Sudan, and maybe perhaps we will have now, we will see, we'll be witness to see maybe a, a normalization with Saudi Arabia, but it will take uh, some time. But we are like in a, a right and a good uh, direction to this uh, uh, goal. Indeed. And uh, maybe another thing for the Israelis, Israelis is a good message, a good uh, news that we don't uh, will not be uh, need to pay money for visa to United States, so we will go without that. Interesting, good development, I think, uh, with regards to relations between the states and uh, Israel. But uh, there was a news that came out, and this was reported where uh, there was a senior advisor within Tehran who said that Iran is capable of developing nuclear weapons at a very short notice as we speak right now. And this update came through Reuters. I'd like your comments or thoughts which are uh, being discussed in Israel about these things, sir. So let's, let's rem remember that the United States has uh, negotiations with Iran on the nuclear bomb. Uh, and um, I think that Iran all the time tries to uh, it's trying to have a psychological warfare on the West that is uh, nearly to achieve a bomb, a nuclear bomb, uh, in order to, uh, I think it's a tactic. It's, uh, Iran is interested to uh, have pressure on the United States to, have, uh, to get back to the uh, GCPOAE. What is uh, the name of, uh, of this joint uh, organization? So, uh, and, and um, Iran is interested uh, also to deter uh, Arab states in the Middle East to uh, normalize ties with Israel. Uh, it, Iran is not uh, happy that uh, now uh, from this visit, of course, is not happy that Israel and United States, United Arab Emirates, uh, Saudi Arabia and other Arab states are ready to have a coalition. Let's say it's like a kind of NATO, NATO Middle East, uh, that it, it is not interested that it will be uh, uh, rise up and will uh, have a threat on the national security of Iran. So Iran is uh, sending these messages in order to terrify and to deter these uh, Arab states, of course, and also to signal to the United States that uh, a plan now to establish a pro-American coalition will not succeed here. Interesting. And uh, there is this whole Middle Eastern NATO has taken shape as a military organization uh, as per se but there's also another organization that had a important meeting and that is the i2u2 where uh, there was in uh, there was israel there was india there was uae and there was usa uh, yes. how do you see the potential outlook although this is probably the, you know this is the first uh, big discussion that is taking place but how do you see it as beginning sir uh, first of all, I bless on this very important strategic partnership and friendship with India, India and Israel. Um, uh, I was also excited to see Modi in uh, this uh, 
uh, television and uh, his interview. I was very excited and also, also my family and other friends and relatives. So um, I think first of all, it's important message to the area that we can, uh, we are determined to strengthen the economic ties. We have uh, the ability to share in technolo technology knowledge, um, agriculture knowledge, uh, in order to develop the uh, middle, to, to develop the area, the region. I think it's in, it like those uh, great uh, uh, statements, these leaders said that in order to cope uh, with uh, the current challenges, challenges like uh, the climate change, like uh, the crisis of energy, we need to cooperate and to share uh, technology and knowledge in order to cope with these challenges. Of course, there are the security challenges that will always be, but more worse today, we see it what happened now in Europe with the with uh, those, these uh, high temperatures. I think it's very important now to cope with the climate change. It has a great impact also on the security matters in Africa, in the Middle East, in Europe. So, uh, so it's I bless this joint uh, um, a joint cooperation between Israel to India, and I think it's a very unique these four states uh, to combine their. Uh, uh, abilities and knowledge it's it's a bless it's an interesting development indeed sir let's you know you you mentioned energy security and today because of the war in ukraine especially and the sanction uh, war that is actually taking place in relation to that we see a shortage of fuel and in that aspect we saw a little bit of a rush to get to iran and talk about the jcpoa uh, we had resistance coming in from Israel about this, that let's not rush into any sort of an agreement. Uh, but the things haven't gone as probably the states planned or the US planned it to kind of smoothly get into this entire thing. How does Israel look at this whole oil crunch and uh, the possibility of normalization with Iran, which a lot many countries in the world would look at considering the shortage of oil today? So first of all, it's a global crisis. This, uh, as you mentioned, the energy. Um, I think as long as the the, the war with, between Ukraine to Russia is lasting, uh, the crisis will be deepened uh, and influence on many lives of many people. Um, it's very difficult now, you know, to find the solution uh, for the energy. I think uh, that the states around the world learned that they should not be dependent maybe on states in order to uh, export uh, wheat and the basic needs of life. So I think that many states have to develop their own uh, abilities to, uh, for example, to uh, having their own agriculture. Of course, they will need like uh, external help, but uh, we should not reach again to this situation that we will become uh, dependent on other countries. Uh, but, uh, uh, concerning the oil crisis that you mentioned, uh, so uh, again, Iran is uh, is Iran is interested, uh, uh, of course, to lift the. Maybe maybe I will change. Maybe no. Maybe I will I will I will uh, I will refer to Biden. Biden visiting Saudi Arabia. Uh, Bi Biden is uh, of course he wanted to visit visit Israel and to send a message. That he wants to uh, strengthen the ties with uh, between Israel to the Arab states and the coalition, but at the same time, the main goal of Biden visit in Saudi Arabia was to convince uh, MB, uh, MBS to uh, uh, lower the prices of the oil because uh, it's have a negative impact on the United States. So, so uh, we see that every state now is struggling with uh, those high prices. Of energy, also in Israel, we got uh, let's say I think uh, in some uh, ten percent, even more ten percent, even more uh, the higher of the gas to it's, it became uh, very high. So it's it's have a negative uh, influence. Indeed, and that does dictate a lot of decisions that a country would take to prevent. Uh, any sort of chaos within the energy sector within them. Uh, uh, yeah. You see, the war in Ukraine has a spillover effect into Syria as well. We have news from Turkey who's wanting to do a military intervention in that region. We've got mm -hmm. the similar players, Russia, 
and of course the western powers including nato and usa involved in it israel is involved in it how do you see that particular aspect changing towards is uh, for israel because syria being very you know in in very close proximity mm-hmm. to israel so that entire situation there does affect you how do you look at it so so uh, unfortunately syria has become a proxy the bashar al assad regime has become a proxy of iran what iran is trying to do and it's not a secret is is trying to build a circle or uh, let's say a ring around israel lebanon syria uh um, yemen iraq and also the red sea you know and in those places iran is trying to build strongholds pro shihi pro iranian strongholds for example the houthis in yemen iraqi militias in iraq and in syria and lebanon is hezbollah in order to build an ability to attack israel perhaps when time will be ready for them to attack israel and uh, israel is a very aware concerned from that because this is an existential threat to the national security of israel um and i will give you an example recently syria and uh, hamas uh reconciled themselves they uh, make sulha sulha is make in arabic is like uh, to have a peace after they fought with each other after they cut their ties for 10 years before 10 years hamas um Hamas cut the ties with uh, Syria, Bashar al-Assad, because the Muslim Brotherhood who came to power in Egypt under Morsi uh, uh, criticized Hamas for having connections with uh, the Syria regime because it massacred the many Sunni people. So Hamas cut it, its ties. And now, thanks to, and because of Hezbollah uh, mediation, uh, uh, thanks to Hezbollah uh, to manage to uh, talk with the Syrian uh, regime and with Hamas, Hamas and Syria are uh, now uh, became again allies and Hamas is going to open an office in Syria. Now, what does it mean? It means that Hamas will have an possibility to challenge Israel from the Syria border and from Damascus also. Uh, Hamas will have an ability or maybe will have more access to weapon from the Shia militias. We know that uh, in the last escalation in May 2021, uh, Hamas, of course, shot rockets from Gaza Street, but also from Lebanon. Uh, I, I was not surprised because uh, I know that Hamas is trying to uh, have a stronghold of also in Lebanon, uh, uh, thanks to Hezbollah agreement, uh, uh, acceptance for that. But now there is an attempt also to uh, Hezbollah and Iran uh, want to, to promote this, to Hamas to uh, have a stronghold in Syria and from there to challenge uh, Israel. So in other words, Iran is a big threat to the region. It's trying to, of course, to, to uh, challenge Israel uh, national security by by cultivating those proxies, by those pro, pro, uh, Shia militias. And I think it's, a, it's not a threat only to Israel, but also to other states, they take the Houthis, the Houthis, say that they will take a part in the the, the third Lebanon war. Uh, but but until then, we see that the Houthis, they are also have it, uh, a threat on Saudi Arabia. They, they launch missiles, rockets on Saudi Arabia, also on United Arab Emirates, uh, in order to deter them not to take actions against Iran. Uh, and um, we also should be aware to the security of the maritime, of the uh, Red Sea in the Indian Ocean security, um, much much of the global trade is going over there, is crossing over there, and the Houthis may have uh, challenged these um, peaceful uh, 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 trades routes in the, the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean. It's a terrorist organization. So, uh, um, so Israel, is 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 and because of this threat and also other challenges, Israel, United States, United and uh, UAE, also Egypt, Saudi Arabia, they are having a joint uh, also military uh, exercises maneuvers uh, the, in order to defend on the the, the, the peace in the Red Sea. Uh, also, Egypt is not interested now that the pro Iranians. Uh, that Iranians will, or the Houthis, the Houthis will come close to uh, 
uh, the Red Sea. It's also a threat to their national security. So uh, yes, Iran is a threat and uh, is playing a double game, like uh, yeah, that Iran is, uh, is, 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 is having negotiation with, Israel, with the United States, uh, but at the same time is cultivating uh, those uh, terrorist organization and proxies. It's one big confusion and with a lot of players involved in it in pretty much all the regions. And you look at it, there is something happening in Yemen, in Syria, and Iraq is pretty much not uh, stable as of now. There's a situation uh, <clears throat> in North Africa. King, King, King Abdallah, King Abdallah, the King of Jordan, he said that, uh, I think it was, I don't know, 10 years ago, uh, that uh, Iran has established a, a Shia crescent. Uh, that is uh, stretched from uh, Tehran, Baghdad, uh, Leba Beirut, and uh, also Yemen now. So uh, Iran has an ambition to have an hegemony on the region by this cultivating these uh, proxies and also have this uh, radical ideology. Uh, Iran is also, uh, you know, uh, in is, um, I know I read that Iran is also uh, trying to show uh, that she cares about Shia. She is all over the world. Also, for example, uh, in Afghanistan with the Azara, and it's also responsible to um, uh, radicalize uh, the Shia in India, in north of India. It's also uh, Iran is taking a, a, is playing a major role in that. Also uh, regarding the Kashmir issue. So Iran is not an innocent player. It's uh, like uh, playing. Uh, many games at the same time in different regions, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about something which is, which would have been not heard of about 10 years ago or five years ago even, is Israel and Saudi Arabia. Uh, there are, I mean, there's not a diplomatic recognition, but we had this news uh, a couple of days ago where Israeli planes will now be allowed to overfly the airspace of Saudi Arabia. Um, there are certain discussions which are taking place on security matters. There's talk about the Middle East NATO. How do you see this thing going forward? And do we see a diplomatic recognition in the coming few months or probably a year or something? So, okay. So, so uh, let's make a, I, I will try to make some sense on that. Uh, of course, Israel and Saudi Arabia want to normalize ties. Uh, for uh, more than a decade, even more, uh, there are uh, relations beneath the desk between Saudi Arabia and Israel. Israel is also uh -huh. helping to say Saudi Arabian security matters in agriculture, technology, uh, but still there is uh, some obstacles uh, about before this normalization. I don't think it will happen so fast. Saudi Arabia wants it's also trying to make public relations. What does it mean? Saudi Arabia has a price for this normalization. What is the price? That Israel will accelerate the process, peace process with the Palestinian, that they will have their own state and uh, to speak on other issues. So uh, in order, because MBS is interested to uh, give uh, legitimacy to his move to normalize ties with Israel to his own people, and also the Muslim Muslims around the world to show that Saudi Arabia is cared about the Palestinian issue. So, so this is one obstacle. Israel has to show that it wills to promote the Palestinian issue. Secondly, uh, there is also uh, negotiations between Saudi Arabia to Iran uh, about uh, the Yemen conflict, the conflict in Yemen. And <clears throat> now if the, I don't think, now there is a, still a, a huge miss trust, suspicions. Saudi Arabia doesn't trust uh, on, on Iranian motives. But, le but let's say that in the Middle East, everything is possible. Everything is possible. So if there will be now uh, uh, an agreement between Saudi Arabia to Iran, it means that uh, Saudi Arabia will lose one driver to normalize ties with Israel. That What does it mean? That Saudi Arabia will try to signal to Iran that it's interested to cultivate the ties with Saudi Arabia, and it's not rushing now to normalize ties uh, with Israel. 
So this can be another obstacle, but the main obstacle is now uh, the, uh, the Palestinian issue. Uh, and uh, MBS also is uh, making, saying to Biden, also saying to Biden that this is what he wants and also American technology and et cetera. Um, and if it happens, this normalization, I think it will happen. I don't know when, but if it happens, it will open a gate to more states. For example, Somalia, uh, it mm. can be uh, maybe Oman, uh, maybe Mauritania, others, maybe in the far distance, maybe Pakistan, I don't know, but uh, but uh, it's, it's it's it will be a game changer. Like if Saudi Arabia will now normalize ties. But right now we have this um, joint cooperation. But something needs to happen. Maybe um, uh, we we have to see. Also, it also depends on the American administrations. How much yeah. he has? Yeah. Yeah. What is the impact and the pressure that he has on the Saudi Arabia regime? Mm, we've seen, the, but I guess till now we've seen both the administrations actually carry forward that the legacy of the Abraham Accords and uh, are putting their weight through. So I guess it looks positive, and that's that's what I would uh, say as somebody sitting from the outside and actually reading about it. Uh, which brings me to my last question to you, sir. There is uh, a lot of talk about political instability within Israel, and that is something that we've been seeing now. Um, things move pretty fast, and that's something which is uh, uh, quite uh, impressive to actually see that uh, you know the governments are changing pretty fast. Why do you think that is, and do you foresee some stability coming forward in the next coming elections? You mean how, how the uh, the political instability in Israel can have an impact on the security? Absolutely. But, yeah. Yeah. Yes, also on our lives, by the way, but uh, of the Israeli citizens, it's also have an impact, uh, particularly now when there is a, a, a crisis in the energy and prices are getting higher all over the world. Yeah, and also yeah, 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 yeah. But, but, but yes, security matters. Look, um, uh, Iran, Hezbollah, Hamas uh, are trying to challenge uh, Israel government every time that there is a new government. Uh, for example, in the last escalation in May 2021, uh, there was a new government, and Hamas challenged launch missiles to Jerusalem, and uh, um, so and and also now when uh, uh, Yair Lapid replaced uh, Naftali Bennett, uh, Hezbollah launched uh, I think two drones from Lebanon uh, to some to the uh, north part of Israel. Where there is uh, where there is uh, oil uh, um, uh, <coughs> oil uh, gas oil and gas uh, some Israeli companies, uh, but Israel managed to uh, intercept it. Um, so so uh, because of this uh, instability, those terrorist organizations are trying to challenge Israel, and Israel has mm -hmm. to have uh, luckily. Uh, both government, also of Bibi Netanyahu and also of the current one of uh, Naftali Bennett and uh, Yair Lapid, they have um, a permanent stance to, uh, towards uh, Iran about the Iranian uh, threat. So, luckily, so at least in that, in that, uh, uh, at least in this matter, uh, all the Israeli governments, left and right, they are determined to. Uh, um, to cope with the Iranian uh, new Iranian uh, challenge, Iranian uh, threat, but of course it has a negative uh, uh, impact uh, on uh, those uh, terrorist organizations who are trying to find weakness in uh, in Israel and uh, uh, to exploit it to the to promote uh, their interests. Indeed, sir, that's one of the reasons I wanted to find out because it does. Uh, bring a lot of focus inwards rather than outwards, especially when there are there is a security threat to uh, the country. So thank you so much. I think you've given us a lot of perspective on a lot of things which are happening in the Middle East. Uh, as I was telling you offline as well, a lot of focus has gone towards Europe and uh, probably China uh, and the Indo-Pacific and China-Taiwan issue. But I guess a lot of developments have taken place in the Middle East that needed a little perspective, which you have kind of uh, put across. 
uh, things seems to be a bit dicey with things, you know, not being settled with regards to the whole JCPOA and things not going in pretty much any direction at the moment. It's just flying, uh, you know, perspectives in, in a sense, as you, I think, very rightly brought out. Uh, but I'd like to actually, you know, uh, put this across is the factor that we see three big tensions, big tension centers in the world today. One is the uh, Indo-Pacific region, then you've got the Middle East and you've got Eastern Europe also. So these are three hotspots that we, you know, uh, see in the world today. Thank you so much once again for the time and uh, for, Thank you for very your... much for inviting me. Thank you, sir. And I'll be sure to stay in touch with you to get a future perspective on further developments as I think the Middle East is going to be active for a little while. Till next time, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. See you.